now we are going to the next uh, special purpose uh, semiconductor device called as pnpn diode so it is also called as shockley diode so actually this pnpn diode is not there in our syllabus but if you want to study the other topics like scr the next topic is SCR, UJT, DIAC, TRIAC. When you want to study all these rectifiers, you have to have complete knowledge about how a PNPN junction, PNPN diode or Shockley diode is going to work. Okay, so because, because other devices construction is based on this PNPN diode only. Okay, so as you know, PNPN diode, you see, you have four layers, PNPN, P1, N1, P2, N2. And since you have four layers in the device, you will have three junctions. Here you have a PN junction, here you have a PN junction, and here you have a PN junction. So it is a four-layered, three-junction, three, three junction, two terminal device. So four layers are there, three junctions are there, and two terminals are there. Okay, so it is a four layer PNPN silicon device with two terminals. So I'm going to control the device by applying the voltages across anode and cathode and I'm going to see what is the performance of the device. And the structure for PNPN diode is given like this. So this is the circuit symbol for PNPN diode. So it is completely different from your conventional PN junction diode where you have only one junction. But here in PNPN diode, you are having three junctions, two terminals, four layers. Okay, so you see here uh, we are going to analyze how this device is going to react for what uh, type of voltage I am going to give to anode and cathode. So when no external voltage is applied to the device, okay, so when no external voltage is applied to the device in such a way that anode is positive. So anode is positive and cathode is negative. Okay, anode is positive, cathode is negative. So J1 and J3 are forward bias. You know that when you connect the same polarity to the, for P if I connect positive, for N if I connect negative, that particular related uh, junction becomes forward bias. So here for P1 the junction is J1, for P3 for uh, N2 the junction is J3. Okay, so these two junctions are forward biased and J2 is going to be reverse biased because N1 is connected to positive and P2 is connected to negative. Correct. So three junctions I have. So depending on what voltage I give to anode and cathode, my two of my junctions will be having the similar biasing uh, uh, capabilities and one junction will be having the other way biased capability. So the outer junctions J1 and J3 will be similarly biased and J2 will be oppositely biased. So if I give positive voltage to cathode anode and negative voltage to cathode, junctions J1 and J3 are forward biased and J2 is reverse biased. So this the then the applied voltage appears across the reverse bias junction J2. So now the current flowing to the device is only the reverse saturation current. So even though you have two forward bias junction, but exactly in the middle you have a reverse bias junction. You know in reverse bias the depletion layer width is going to be very very large. So this restricts the flow of the majority carriers across the device. So only reverse saturation current is going to flow through the device. You are able to understand, so PNPN diode we are seeing, it is a four uh, layer, three junction, two terminal device. First case I am giving, I am analyzing the device, I am subjecting the device to various inputs. First I am giving positive voltage to anode, negative voltage to cathode. So the junction J1 and J3 are forward biased, while J2 is reverse biased. So even though you have majority is forward biased, only one junction is reverse biased. But since the junction is present exactly at the middle of the device, the it will not, it will restrict the majority carriers to cross the reverse biased junction and produce the current. Okay, so even though the device is having two forward bias tensions and one reverse bias tension, the current is mainly the reverse saturation current which is flowing through the device. So this is going to be the uh, initial stage. Now I am going to increase the voltage. Now if I am going to increase the voltage slowly, what will happen? These my majority carriers will acquire the energy they will try to cross the junction so uh, the current will also slowly increase until a voltage called firing voltage or breakdown voltage so till this point the current will start increasing so once firing takes place one all the majority carriers will have uh, 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 sufficient energy to cross the depletion region j2 then the current will increase abruptly and the voltage will decrease sharply across the device 
So simple reason, so the reverse biased uh, junction J2 is that the depletion layer which is going to be larger. So until the majority carriers have sufficient energy to cross the junction, they will be crossing slowly and current will be increasing slowly as you increase the voltage. Once the required amount of energy is got from the majority carriers in the form of externally supplied voltage, these carriers will cross the junction very quickly and that point is called as firing or breakdown voltage or break over voltage so breakdown is already we used in pn junction diode so we are using a new term called break over voltage so once this firing or break over happens then the current will abruptly increase in the device and the voltage will be starting to decrease so the device is set to be switched to on state so initially when the reverse saturation current was flowing, the device is said to be in off state. Once the break to breakover point is reached, the current will increase abruptly. The device is said to be on and the voltage will be reducing in the device. So once the device is fired into conduction, so minimum current, minimum amount of current known as holding current is required to keep the device in on state. So once the device has crossed the firing voltage, it is in on state right so if you want to continue the device to operate in on state you need to have a minimum amount of current called holding current to flow into the device always so if the holding current is not maintained then the device will switch back to off state okay so the switching back to on and off state depends on two parameters one is firing or breakover voltage second one is holding current okay very very important thing you have to remember in pnpn -PN diode so if you want to off the device from on state, then you have to reduce the holding current. So you below the uh, holding voltage. So if you reduce the current below the holding voltage or breakover voltage, then automatically the device will be turning back to off state. So this diode is acting like a switch during forward bias condition. And the characteristic of the PNPN -PN diode is given here. In the forward bias, you see, as the current is... Now, as the voltage is increased, the current will be slowly increasing until it reaches the breakover voltage. Once breakover is reached, current will still start increasing and become constant, but the voltage you see it is reduced. And the constant current, uh, if you draw a line from the constant current, you will have, it will intersect the x axis at a point called VH. This VH is called as holding voltage. And the minimum value of current at which it starts increasing is called as holding current. So if you want to turn off the device, you have to give voltage less than VH, less than the holding voltage VH. So VBO breakover is the voltage where current starts increasing abruptly, and VH is the voltage where minimum voltage or current has to be maintained for the device to continue in on state okay and reverse bias characteristic is same as your pn junction diode and this diode also has avalanche breakdown so after a particular voltage the majority carriers will multiply in huge numbers they will cross the uh, depletion region giving give rise to abruptly give rise to enormous current so in reverse bias the current is enormous and voltage is constant in forward bias you see you have different regions okay in forward bias you have different region first one is cutoff region where the device is completely off so cutoff region is still the break uh, break uh, over voltage then you have negative resistance region where if you are increasing the voltage but you are increasing the voltage sorry uh, the current is increasing but you see the voltage is reducing so yesterday also we have seen the condition for negative resistance right so if voltage is increasing current should decrease or if voltage is decreasing current should increase so in these two cases you have negative resistance here also you see voltage is decreasing current is increasing so we have negative resistance here and breakover current you see it is in micro amperes but holding current you see it is in milli amperes so thousand times the current is multiplied as the device is undergoing the process of negative resistance region and after negative resistance region current becomes constant which is called a saturation region so three regions of operation we have cutoff region is the device is said to be in off state and negative resistance region is the region where the device is going to turn from on state or off state to on state and in this region the device is unstable so the current uh, is ab now abruptly increasing the voltage is decreasing so negative resistance if you are going to operate this device it will be unstable and it will become like an oscillator i told you in yesterday's class the devices which are having negative resistance property are very good to work as oscillators so you should never 
uh, allow the devices to work in negative resistance region. So the device will work as an oscillator and it will become unstable. Okay, so this is going to be the operation of PNP and diode. So any doubt anybody is having, please ask uh, any queries if you have. I am going to pause for a few seconds. This uh, understanding of PNP and diode is very, very important because all the subsequent devices are based on this PNP and diode only. I once again say the functioning in this graph. So as you increase the voltage, the current will be slowly increasing and it is going to be reverse saturation current. So it will be in the order of microamperes. And until a point where breakover happens, the current will be increasing. And once breakover happens, the old current is still increasing, but voltage starts reducing abruptly across the device. So when voltage is reducing and the current is still increasing, you call it as negative resistance region. So after the particular minimum holding current IH, the current will be maintained constantly. So the minimum current required to maintain the device in on state is going to be IH and the minimum voltage required to maintain the device in the same on state is going to be VH. So IH is called as holding current, VH is called as holding voltage and in the reverse bias it works like a normal P in junction diode where you have avalanche breakdown. Okay, so this is the working of a PNP and diode. Now we are going to design various other devices based on PNP and diode or Shockley diode. The first one is silicon controlled rectifier.